Hey Photoshop gurus in training. Uh, this video is going to cover a lot of our selection tools. I'm hoping to be able to cover um, the lasso, uh, polygonal lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool as well as the quick selection tool and we may uh, also touch on the magic wand tool as well. So um, it will be a little lengthy video, but just hang with me. These are uh, this is good information for you to know. Okay, so I've got the uh, the PS4-11 file open, and um, <clears throat> so what I'm wanting to do is I want to what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to select this lady and put her on a different background. Okay, now we've got a really busy background back here. So, um, selecting is not always the easiest to do on a really busy background, especially when you have uh, complementary colors or, uh, that kind of blend together like this white with the gray, but we can get in there. This, this isn't really bad. I've seen a whole lot worse. Um, but it really works best when you're doing this on solid colors, but, you know, most images are, do not have solid background colors. So we have to learn how to go about it the hard way. This is where our um, where Photoshop shines at because of the selection tools that it offers. All right, so let's look at um, the lasso tool. It is just basically, um, it's clicking and dragging your mouse, okay? Now if you have a steady hand, a really good steady hand, uh, you could probably do a whole lot of your selections with just the lasso tool. I typically do not use it unless uh, I'm going to select something really quick. So like if I knew that I wanted this lady's mouth and I was going to use it on something else, okay, then I would use the lasso tool. Now let me show you what features we have up here. With every brush or every tool that we use, we always have options up here to go along with them. So when I click on any tool down through here, notice how my options are changing. This is uh, very important for you to remember that you have these options up here because that is what controls that tool. Okay, so we have the lasso tool and the lasso tool gives us four different uh, ways that we can use our selection. We can just have a regular selection and that's just me just going around here just selecting. Okay, it's not doing anything special. We can do the add to selection now that's where I already got a selection. It's going to keep that one and now I can just keep adding to it. But notice it's got that little plus sign there beside of the lasso at the cursor point. Okay, We can do a subtract if I decide, hey, you know what, I don't need this uh, background area here. So I'm just going to get rid of that and then we'll just take it away. Now notice I should have went all the way around it. Okay let it know exactly what all I want to get rid of there but now I need to add this back so you got to put a little thought into it uh, and then we also have the uh, the overlapping so if I want to just make a selection here then all it's going to get is the commonality between what I just drew, drew and what was already there okay um, it won't get anything extra so we don't really use that a whole lot. Mostly I use the add and the subtract. That is the main ones that I use. Um, you can also do a feather. So if we were wanting to select this lady and um, let's go ahead and put a feather of under 25 so that I can show you how this works real good. Now I'm just going to do this really quick. Okay. Um, if we were doing a real selection, of course, we'd want to take our time and do a nice job and try not to get these background pixels but for the sake of time this is going to be a quick one and there we go okay so um, now I'm just going to go edit let's see why is it not letting me do that let's try that edit copy I was on the wrong targeted layer Okay, and then I'll just want to go edit. Um, well, let's create a new layer. 
and go edit paste. All right, now I'm going to turn this layer off and you can see that it has pasted my selection. Now, what that feather did is that it feathered in 25 pixels from the edge here. From where I made that line at with the lasso, it feathered that in, meaning it, it made it opaque from the edge all the way in to the person, 25 pixels in toward my subject, okay? Um, it's a very nice little feature, like, you know, if uh, I didn't want to go through great lengths of making a lot of really tedious selections, I could use feathering. If I was going to do a collage of a lot of people, you know, um, like in, you know, you've probably seen this like in church directories or school, you know, annuals and stuff, where they have like a page of all kinds of different um, images of people doing different things, you know, band students, uh, journalism students and you know they're all kind of merged together into one image and they they have this nice feather around them well that's just where the designer didn't really want to go in and make all those tedious selections plus it also gives it a nice soft effect too okay all right now the other option is uh, anti-alias and um, I always just leave that checked and then, of course, if we had a selection, we could go to Refine Edge. And we'll touch on Refine Edge later, so I'm not going to, that's like a whole other video. Uh, but let's see if I had a selection, then Refine Edge would come up for me. All right. All right. So the next one is the uh, Polygonal Lasso Tool. And uh, just let me, let me turn that one off the other way. I'm going to target my background again. Um, turn that on. And this is one that actually just allows you to have more control over it. It's like, okay, I want to put, every time I click, it puts a point down for me, puts an anchor point down for me. So I have a lot more control over uh, where I'm placing my line at. Other than the lasso tool is more dependent on how sturdy your hand is. Um, I do like this tool. Uh, the only problem that I have with it is, um, you know, it's just all straight lines. And straight lines just don't work for everything. Of course, you can, you know, make lots of little anchor points when you're going around a curve. And that helps tremendously. Uh, you can certainly, you know, make a really nice selection with this tool. It just takes a lot of time, okay? Uh, it's, it is a tool that I do use quite often, but... Um, I get, well, you know, anymore I can't say I do use that quite often, I'll be honest. Um, I really use the quick selection tool for most of my stuff anymore. Uh, and the quick selection tool is kind of new to Photoshop. It's been around a little bit, but uh, it's one of the newer, probably the newest selection tool. Uh, or at least of the ones that we're going over today. Okay, I'll just go up here and then see, like it just tedious to get in there. Um, we're going to look at a tool here in a minute that will do a much easier job of this. And I'm trying to do this really fast because I don't want our video time to run out. And now when I double click, when I overlap the end with the beginning and I double click, then it'll create my selection. Okay, so now I can just do a uh, command or control C uh, v, Control C, Control V, and on a PC, Command C, Command V on the Mac, uh, will paste that onto a new layer for me. It'll copy it and paste it onto a new layer. So see, that is a tighter selection, much tighter. Uh, there's a lot that we could do for, do to that from here on, uh, but we're just looking at selections today. All right, and we noticed that the features on that are also basically the same thing that was on the lasso tool. Now the magnetic lasso tool is uh, works basically just like the uh, polygonal lasso tool, except it kind of does it for you. You just kind of start clicking around through here, and it searches uh, for you. You know, it searches uh, the difference in the colors. So it tries to lay down the line where you think, where it thinks you want to make that separation at. And again, it does a really good job most of the time. Um, it's uh, 
still one of those tools that's, that's tedious. You know, like if I, I went up in there, so I would hit my delete key, just go back, and you can delete, like delete, delete. Every time you hit delete, it uh, deletes one of those anchor points. If you feel like you need an anchor point somewhere, you can just click and put one down. Um, see, it doesn't always go up like I think it should. Uh, so, yeah, so you just have a little hard time with it sometimes. Uh, the difference in the width, well, let me, I'm just going to do this really fast here so we can get our selection. Okay. Um, what I have up here in the options, they are a little different for this tool. The width is, uh, like, how many pixels do you want to seek out, you know, so... When, I've got, when I'm running my cursor point along through here, it's looking at five pixels this way and five pixels that way to see what the difference between those is. It also is looking at the contrast. If I know the contrast is really low, like over here we have low contrast, then I might want to, you know, set that low, okay? If, I, if the contrast is really high, then I could set it like this. This is mixed, so it's kind of hard to do it with either one. Frequency is how many points you're putting down, how many points the magnetic lasso tool is putting down for you. Um, the more points, the more flexibility you have, but it also uh, makes it harder to work with uh, in your selection. So you don't want like a huge amount of points there. It's, um, it just gets too tedious. It's also taxing on the memory in Photoshop. And again, we have the refined edge. Uh, this option here is just for people who use tablets. So if you're using a tablet, a, a Wacom tablet or whatever, then um, this would be for your pressure sensitivity on that. All right, now on to the better tool to use. Okay, I'm just going to uh, deselect. So I'm going to do Command D or Control D on a PC. And that deselects my selection. Now I'm going to go to the Quick Tool Selection. Um, Notice up here, the quick tool selection, we have the uh, plus and the minus, and that is to add to our selection or take away from our selection. And the quick selection tool is also based on a brush. So you can make it bigger, really big, like that's gigantic. I can't even see it out here. Okay, I can make it really big, or I can make it smaller. Uh, you can also go with hardness, spacing. Typically, you're just going to use space or uh, size there. And then we can sample all layers, meaning we could, like, if we had more layers going through here, we could be selecting down through the layers. And then we have auto enhance, uh, which just kind of, uh, it, it works with the edge, the selection edge, and it just kind of tries to figure out things for you, tries to help you. All right, so here is what is so cool about this tool is I can just start clicking on this background and notice how it just snaps to basically what I'm needing it to do okay now it it goes out um, in a circumference around this brush so it's like when I click here it's looking all around you know to see if those are similar pixels that I'm wanting to select. So it's trying to think for me. And it does a pretty good job most of the time. Now, notice that here it just went into the hair. Now here's where you would want to lower your brush size. And you can do that. Uh, you can either go up here to the brush and lower your brush size. Or the quick way to do that is to use the brackets on your keyboard. Um, they're right after the letter P and the left bracket takes it down in size and the right bracket takes the brush size up. So if you go down in size, come over on the lady's hair and go to the subtract, then it will take that selection away, okay? Uh, another way of doing that is, uh, well, I'll do another video on shortcuts for you so we can, uh, we'll talk about those in, in the next video, all right? Uh, very good features to have. A quick selection tool. This is the tool I use all the time. It's the easiest. All right, let me know if you have questions.